Okay, the video cut out because I needed to erase them. That's a big challenge is always having storage because they do something where the storage just fills up and fills up and fills up. So I can't do these videos and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's excruciatingly painful in my, yeah, just pretty much, well, everywhere. But then really I can feel very much pain in the, in those areas. So, um, but yeah, I wrote to them that, you know, I'm very aware that the army intelligence guys knew what was going on and I get it. Like, you know, they're, as the guy explained, it's one of the most, uh, important intelligence, uh, locations in the entire country that in Washington, DC, he said, because, well, proximity, I mean, it's just proximity to Asia and that's why Hawaii would be so, and with China being such a important player in the game and, um, yeah, on a world scale. So, I mean, these guys fly around all the time in planes and they're just all over the place. Um, and, uh, so, so, uh, they do keep a really close eye on Hawaii and, um, I have no doubt that the intelligence guys know of lots of stuff going on, you know, probably women and children being beaten, people being raped, people being murdered, but that's not really their job to step in on a state level and do something about it if they were to be being done by a terrorist group or something, Homeland Security, stuff like that. And I do think that's why I started seeing so many military looking people in Manoa. Because they made it super obvious that they were the sovereignty, at least a faction, some one sovereignty group was involved in what was going on with me. So it had to have crossed their paths. And so they were aware. And then, you know, would they tell the feds? Would they, you know, I don't know. I just don't see at this point how the feds would not be aware of what's happening here. Just because they're so obvious all the time. They just have no fear, you know. I mean, it's like living in Mexico. They don't care. There's no, there's nobody taking them to task over it. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's what I wrote in my email that to the federal prosecutor's office who is prosecuting Michael Miskey, um, and also the chief of police, the Kalohas, um, because they seem like maybe some, that why I reached out to them is because they seem like they might be interested in something like this. <laughs> and the fact that Miski used chemical weapons at times um, in his reign of terror on the public mm -hmm. and on anybody that crossed his path and made him angry. So it just seemed too familiar to what's going on with me, and I thought they might be interested they said that they were forwarding my email to the Federal Bureau of Investigations, and then they really haven't said much since then. Um, so whether or not that's actually happening, whether or not the... I mean, I th I would bet everything I have that the feds are very aware of what's going on in this house and these people and all of that. I just don't have an answer for why they wouldn't do anything about it. Um I'm sure that the cartel and these type of organizations have friendships within uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigations. I mean, that's just going to be a realism, just like, you know, when they did the Michael Miskey arrests and investigation, they brought in federal agents from the mainland, probably as opposed to using many of the federal agents in Hawaii because of the reality that they're going to face that there's just too much connection with the people in Hawaii and the organized crime and it's small and all of that. So that's what I wrote to the federal prosecutor's office last night about these neighbors and their visitor that I believe is participating in raping and sodomizing and torturing me and probably is staying at the house just for that reason. Um, 
And, uh, and yeah, I mean, because there's no way, like, what I heard last night on their property, that if you lived in that house and you were living next door to somebody that was claiming these types of things were happening, that you wouldn't wake up and you wouldn't investigate yourself if you were actually not involved. See, sometimes you just have to do deductive reasoning, and the deductive reasoning would be that, that it it's impossible for them to not know. They know that what I'm saying, you know, they, you know, it, it, there's no plausible deniability at this point for them. And yeah. So that is what I am stating. And I'm, you know, there's no one here to call and tell. So I, you know, I continue to email that federal prosecutor's office with information like that where I can give them license plates and things like that, where they can look it up and, you know. But I think they already know, and I don't know why they're not doing anything. But I can tell you right now, my private parts are really... uh, uh, painful. Like, I'm just having, like... So, um, I'm going to go see if my cat's alive. Would you like to come with me? And, of course, the fact that this dog here, who's just living in abject terror, this is the new norm for him. And, um, sadly... And, uh, here she is. Like, who are you? Oh, wait, is that you, Mommy? Yeah. In a room with, uh, no, not laying on the couch like a normal dog or something. But here, let's go see Kitty. Who apparently spent the night in here. Hey, Kitty. Kitty, you alive? Pretty cold. Hi. Hey, Vita. Hi. Did somebody come in last night? Oh. Yeah. Your eyes are pretty red and bloodshot. I heard her crawling around in the attic up there, and I thought about going up there, but then they gassed me unconscious, so I actually didn't get up there. Hi. Yeah, me, who is you? Anybody that knows animals can really, really take a look at this animal's face and see what I'm seeing, you know? I don't know how you couldn't see it, but just depends on what you want to believe. A kitty stumbling around. Hey, sweetie. All right. And these are the signs of a person who's been drugged every single day. I am somebody that does their dishes every day. I don't know how many days has gone by where I haven't done my dishes. Last night I had to force myself to eat, and I just left the bread sitting out like that. And Yeah, I mean, just in general, the disarray of the house and everything that is. That was one of the first signs of when I started feeling, when I seemed to realize that I was being drugged uh, more. Um, When one day I just sort of looked around the house, and I was like, I haven't cleaned. <laughs> like, what's going on, you know? Um, but when you're being drugged without your consent and without your knowledge, it's hard to really, you know, live in that. So, 
my own hand smells like my private parts. So, but yeah, it's all wet down there, even though I'm wearing a lot of clothes because it's freezing cold because, yeah. <coughs> yeah. There you go.